everyone and welcome back to my top five favorite series. Last week we started off this series by taking a look at my top five favorite blue watercolors and this week we are going to jump right into my top five favorite yellow watercolors. If you are new to the channel or new to this series, last week I explained kind of what my criteria was for picking out these favorite colors and just reiterating that they're my favorite colors. They don't have to be your favorite colors, but I would love to hear your favorites in the comments below. Uh, but without further ado, I want to try and keep this nice and short and concise this week. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Just like last week, I could not possibly narrow it down to a solid top five. I had one other color that I had to sneak in there. So this week's honorable mention is... Lemon Yellow by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith's Lemon Yellow is made from PY175 instead of the typical PY3, which is also called Hansa Yellow Light, but also commonly goes by Lemon Yellow as well. And Hansa Yellow Light is a nice color. It's a cool yellow. That's why people put it in their palettes, but it doesn't have the greatest light fastness, and it's uh, like most yellows. It's a little bit more on the opaque side. The reason I love Daniel Smith's variety so much with PY175 is that it is incredibly transparent, incredibly cool, and it has a great light fastness rating. As you will see throughout today's video, we are going to be mixing a variety of yellows and greens so that you can kind of see the full ranges of all these different yellows. Every mixture throughout today's video has the same mixtures in the same place except for one tiny little area that I messed up but I put a little arrow there so you'd know that I accidentally switched the colors. And uh, in just a moment here I'm going to be writing them out on the paper so you can see what those are. In today's video, you're going to see some of these yellows make really beautiful oranges and some of them make really beautiful greens. It's really rare that you find a yellow that is both at good, although they do exist out there and we will get to those. But typically there are cool yellows and warm yellows. Cool yellows are those that lean closer to green, like this lemon yellow here, and they're really good for mixing greens because they lend themselves to that area. The warmer yellows that lean more towards orange or red are really good for mixing you got it, orange. When you take a cool yellow and mix it with an orange, you're going to see here in this swatch that they are really kind of dull and desaturated and muted because you've got some of the extra coolness from the green counteracting the reds from the oranges. So they neutralize a little bit more instead of giving you a bright, vibrant watercolor. Now with all of that out of the way, I can get to telling you what colors I use to mix our mixtures today on our swatch sheets. Starting off with the top of the orange column, I mixed the lemon yellow with transparent pyrrole orange. This is a really, really deep, almost red orange color, um, and it is gorgeous for making blacks and everything. And as you can see here, it's really nice for a really muted, earthy, kind of orangish tone. Next up we have Pyrrole Red, which is a warm red mixed with that cool yellow. Then we have Quinacridone Rose, which is a cool red, so it leans more towards blue. Followed by Burnt Sienna, I wanted to get some natural tones in there to show you. And the final one in that column is with Dioxazine Violet. Now Violet is the opposite of a yellow color, and so I mixed all of our yellows with that so we can see what kind of neutrals we got. Now this particular yellow doesn't make a very pleasant color with the dioxazine violet, but you know, that's all right. Um, not every color has to be great at mixing every other color. In the greens column, we have first ultramarine, which is a warmer shade of blue. Then following up, we have Prussian blue, which is a nice dark warm blue color. So it's gonna be really rich there. Then we have phthalo turquoise, which is a phthalo blue and a phthalo green mixed together, followed by cobalt teal phthalo green blue shade and then over on the right hand side we've got perylene green which I happen to love with this lemon yellow I don't think I've ever mixed these two together but I love how they glow they're so beautiful and then finally we have magello blue which is a really 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 deep blue almost like an Indian throne color so on every swatch sheet we do from now on out, these are the colors we're going to use in the same location so it's easy for you to find them. If you are interested in the high resolution files for these color swatches, I do make those available to my patrons over on patreon.com. And if you haven't heard the good news already, Patreon reversed those fees that they had announced that they were going to be introducing. They've canceled that. So all is well over on Patreon. Now I'm officially moving into our top five list at number five. We've got Yellow Ochre from Daniel Smith, made from PY43. Now I had no idea before I started this list how much of an affinity I have for Daniel Smith's yellow tones. You're going to see them pop up 
quite a few times, which balances out because last week in the blues, we didn't mention them all, all that much. I did do an entire color spotlight on yellow ochre, and if you missed that video, it might have been because it was a collaboration video with Sade from Sadie Saves the Day. So I uploaded that to her channel, she uploaded a video to my channel, and uh, I'll link a card in the upper right hand corner so you can go check that out if you'd like to. Uh, in that color spotlight, I talked about how much I love this color, how underappreciated I think it is, and People's complaints about it are valid in that a lot of brands have a really chalky, really opaque version of this color, but I really love Daniel Smith's variety, which doesn't tend to be as opaque. It has a really beautiful texture to it, and it makes these really, really beautiful, earthy, neutralized pastel colors. Right there at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that's what I was mentioning earlier, where I accidentally swipped Swipped, swapped <laughs> two of the colors. Um, so the dioxazine violet mixture is that fourth one in the column that should be last. And then the last one is actually the burnt sienna, which should be fourth. So that's what that's about. Um, in that second column with the greens, you'll see with ultramarine, so with um, any warm blues or warm dark blues, you'll actually see that yellow ochre is a really nice neutral and creates these really pretty grays. The greens here are gonna be really soft and sub subdued. Help if I could talk today, but you know. I particularly like the mixture with Magello Blue. The gray that it makes is just really beautiful and soft. And if you haven't given Yellow Ochre a chance, or perhaps you gave it a chance in another brand but haven't tried Daniel Smith, I would highly encourage it if you'd like to paint with these types of colors. So we've had a cool yellow, we've had an earthy yellow, now it's time for a nice warm yellow. Up in spot number four on my list is Hansa Yellow Deep from Daniel Smith, made from PY65. This pigment is available in many brands across many different companies. I do like Daniel Smith's version because it tends to glow more than the other ones do. I feel like Da Vinci's version is a bit flat. I feel like some of the other versions I've tried are a bit flat. So for my pick uh, for this particular pigment, I really like Daniel Smith's version. You're gonna see here when I was talking earlier about how the warmer yellows can make these bright, vibrant oranges. You can see that here with the oranges and the reds. When you mix it with a burnt sienna, you kind of almost get like this earthy, somewhere in between raw sienna and quinacridone gold color. It's really neat. And when you mix this color with dioxazine violet, you get this beautiful, sweet brown color. They neutralize so lovely together, and you can get the values pretty dark if you're using strong concentrations of both pigments. Now, when you have a warm yellow, you're not going to get bright, vibrant neon greens, but I actually love the greens that this color makes when you combine it with various blues. When you mix it with another warm blue, you're gonna get a really deep, earthy, mossy green, and then when you start to work into the brighter shades of green, you're going to get brighter and brighter values. With the Paraline Green, it makes this beautiful, dark, sappy green that I was really impressed to see. And with that Magello Blue, you're going to get an olive -y type of green that is pretty, pretty close to the gray side. It was really hard to determine between the second and third places on this top five list because both of the colors that I'm about to talk about are both beautiful and very close to each other. Um, I had to go with the one that I know better in the second spot. So first up, we have got Nickel Azo Yellow. Now this particular swatch is from Daniel Smith, but um, M. Graham and Core also make beautiful varieties of this color, and they are all made from PY150. This is a really gorgeous, very transparent, and I don't know how to describe it other than it glows off of the paper. It's really hard for me to determine whether or not this is a cool yellow or a warm yellow because of its luminosity. It just seems to take on characteristics of both, which I don't know how that's possible. But when you mix it with oranges, it definitely has this cooler tone, like it's not gonna make a super vibrant, punchy orange. But when you start moving in to the greens, you get these beautiful, rich, warm, earthy greens that are just so gorgeous to look at. I've heard you guys talk about it, and finally I was able to get a little bit of a sample of that from one of our viewers, Ophelia, so I've been playing with that sample, and that's where this came from. Then I also got the set, uh, I got the pigment in a core set that I'm going to be taking a look at here on the channel shortly, and uh, I'm just really enjoying playing with it more. Because I haven't used it as much as some of the other yellows, it ended up kind of in the middle range of number three, but I could certainly see it climbing over the course of me getting used to working with it.
in the number two spot, a color that is very similar but still has some different characteristics to it, we have got Permanent Yellow Light from Mission Gold, which is PY154. Now, if you've been around this channel, you've heard me talk about this color before, and uh, Winsor Newton does make a really nice variety of it as well. Um, the Winsor Newton variety is a bit lighter and um, cooler than this variety is, but this to me is the perfect shade of just a middle yellow. It's a tiny bit on the warm side, but you can really make it go either way. It's really great for mixing oranges, but you can also cool it down with some greens. This pigment has some really interesting textural qualities to it that I wouldn't quite call granulation, but it makes her really unique and beautiful textures in your work. And so you don't have a flat yellow on your page. It definitely has some life to it. It makes some really nice middle of the road oranges and a variety of greens depending on which cool color you mix with it. I'm not sure what else I can say about this color that I haven't said about other colors that are already on the list other than that this is a workhorse in my palette. If I could only pick one yellow and I couldn't have a split primary where I have a cool and a warm, this would be the color I choose. We are going to be approaching the number one spot on my yellow and there could only be one in this position. My top five was hard, my top favorite one is not. This color is absolutely stunning. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know how much I love this color. I know how much many of you love this color. So without further ado, your top one is Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Gold is a pigment that was recently discontinued. I have a whole video on that that I'll put up in the upper right hand corner. And I also have done a whole color spotlight on this as well. As I talk about in that other video, this is a single pigment variety of the last remaining source of this pigment. Many other brands had to switch over to a hue many, many, many years ago, and now Daniel Smith also sells a hue in all of its current stock. But the original pigment is just this beautiful, luminous, gorgeous, warm yellow. And if you haven't been able to tell from my list already, I really love these warm, earthy yellow colors, and um, quinacridone gold is obviously no exception. When you mix this color with oranges and reds, you get these beautiful, transparent, fiery colors. When you mix it with dioxazine violet, you get this luminous brown color that's like this chocolatey purple. Oh, it's beautiful. And then when you mix it with greens, I just, I can't even. Like, they're, they're the most beautiful greens ever. I won't let anyone tell me any differently from my own personal tastes, but uh, it doesn't matter what blue you mix it with. It doesn't matter what green you mix it with. They're all gorgeous. When you mix it with Thalo Green, you get Daniel Smith's original sap green formula, which you all know I am super, super in love with as well. That's the bottom color in the green row. Quinacridone Gold is gorgeous on its own. It's gorgeous in mixes. It's the all around perfect warm yellow for me. And I am going to be so, so sad when my little stockpile here runs out. But uh, in, in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy it in all its beautiful glory. And I hope that you all enjoyed this top five yellows list. If you want to learn more about quinacridone gold or lemon yellow, be sure to check out my color spotlight series where there's plenty of other colors to look at as well. And before you go, I did want to let you know that today and tomorrow, if you're watching this video when it comes out, I am having a sale in my Etsy shop for my original paintings that are all 30% off, which I've never done before. It's a huge sale on over there. So if you want to pick up a unique a uh, handmade Christmas gift for someone in your life, be sure to check that out. I'll put a link in the description below like always. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, all of the drama that happened with Patreon over this past week, if you've heard about that, is resolved at this point. So if you'd like access to those high resolution files I told you about here, or real time tutorials, or perhaps you'd like a monthly postcard sent to you, or to join us for live streams, um, go ahead and check that on out. I'll put a link up in the corner and in the description below so you can find us, and I would love for you all to join our community. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who already support me. I could not do this without you, and I so, so, so appreciate you as I tell you all the time because I love you guys so much. Thank you guys all so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Make sure to hit that little bell icon if you want to come back and join us next week for my top five favorite reds. And one more thing I almost forgot to tell you, be sure to head on over to my Instagram where you can find me at inliquidcolor where I am doing a 12 day of giveaways. We are on day three right now, but you can still join the fun where we have a different prize that is going to be given out every single day until Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, there's going to be a grand prize giveaway as well. So check that out if you want to be a part of that. I'd love to see you over there as well. And I will see you next time.